Hello again, dear diary. So much for me finding more time to myself lately. Between helping at the bakery, running patrols, and keeping up with my schoolwork, it's been a lot. But now I finally have some time to myself, so here we go. Write about something you would still buy if it cost twice as much as it does today. Hmm, that's a hard question. There are a lot of little things I'd like to have, but when it really comes down to it, I don't actually need that much. My first thought was ingredients to make macaroons for Tiki, but my parents are pretty well connected in the bakery industry, and I don't think we would run too low on supplies. Tickets to go see the movies with my friends are always nice, but we could always just pick an old favorite and watch it on TV instead. Sewing and craft materials would be my second big go-to, since how else will I keep up my fashion skills and make birthday gifts for everyone, especially Adrian? As a friend, of course. But that's such a broad category, and there's more than just one specific item I would need. Assuming everything would cost twice as much, I wouldn't want to spend it on anything too frivolous. I've often wondered about what life would be like if times got harder and everything became more expensive or hard to get. I've heard and read lots of stories about people having to make do with very little, and wondered if I could do the same. I know I'm very lucky to have the lifestyle I do, and I often remind myself to appreciate it. I never have to worry about food. My parents are the best bakers in Paris. Not to mention the kindest, most understanding people you'll ever meet. I go to a wonderful school right within walking distance. Or running, since I'm somehow almost always still late. And aside from Chloe and Lila, I guess every school has some of those. Everyone gets along really well. I have a beautiful home, lots of nice clothes, and never have to worry about electricity or running water. Not to mention I have a phone, laptop, pillows, blankets, books, a sewing machine. Oh, and an ancient magical jewel that grants me superpowers as well as a wonderful daily companion. I have so much to be thankful for. And I am. I just also wonder if it's too good to last and what might happen if things changed. And that's kind of a scary thought. Wow, this got way darker than I intended it to be. I should have just gone with the sewing stuff idea. I guess it's an understandable thing to be thinking about, though. While there is so much good in the world, there are a lot of bad things, too. And just listening to the news makes it seem like everything is spiraling to an inevitable collapse. Except for the occasional segments featuring the owl. Those always brighten things up. Did you know that Professor Dama, uh, well... The owl has started getting kids from the younger grades to dress up like owls and accompany him on certain missions. He's calling them the Owlets, and Ken Warner even gave them some pointers on how to be superheroes in everyday life. The owl has really come a long way since the times he would sneak out and try to grapple hook up a tree. I wish I could only focus on good moments like that. But then someone mentions something in the bakery, or a troubling news article pops up on my screen, and I'm reminded of how quickly things can take a turn for the worse. The Akuma attacks are a constant reminder of that. But as much as the threat of Monarch looming over Paris worries me, at least there's still the hope of beating him and all of this going back to normal someday. With the rest of the world, it's not so simple. Evil seems to have spread into every corner, darkening hearts and poisoning minds. So overcome with greed and selfishness, they don't care how their actions affect other people something I experienced quite vividly while I was visiting my uncle in Shanghai, specifically in a horrible man named Cash, who willingly stole from others and pressured the less fortunate into doing the same. But even in the midst of all that crime and villainy, I also saw people who stood up to it and wanted to make things right. A group of boys challenged the thugs who had been chasing me, and even went to great lengths to ensure my necklace was returned. A girl named Faye helped me too. Actually, she was the one who stole my things to begin with, but that's a longer story. See previous diary entries for full details. It's hard to do what's right when the world around you is twisted and wrong, and sometimes it seems no matter what you do, nothing will ever make a difference. Even Cat Noir and I struggle with that sometimes. No matter how many villains we defeat, there always seems to be more, and sometimes I wonder if this will ever end. Even more so with the world. There are so many problems and it feels like it'll take forever to fix. And yet, I 
think we often underestimate the power of one small good deed. I know that what Faye and those boys did made a difference to me, and now they continue to go about their lives seeing what they can do for others. One thing I've noticed, in the midst of every battle, every news story, and every storybook, is that when hard times come, people come together and focus on what really matters. They may not have much, but what they have they share, and those small bits of kindness help ward away the dark. Hard times can either bring out the best or the worst in us, and it's up to you to make that choice. One of my mom's favorite sayings is you can either get bitter or you can get better. A lot of people let themselves become hardened by their experiences, drowning in self-pity and despair. To be honest, I felt myself spiraling down that path on many occasions, more than once. But it's in those moments when our thoughts and actions matter most. Decide that no matter what happens, you'll make it through, doing the best you can and becoming stronger because of it. But <laughs> wow, I've really strayed from the topic this time. I'm still not sure what I'd choose if it cost twice as much as it does today. And the idea of harder times is still troubling to me. But it's comforting to be reminded that the little actions we take do matter, even in a world full of darkness. And if my time as Ladybug has taught me anything, is that when people come together, it's a powerful thing. Hard times draw people closer. Evil will be defeated one day. And I'm not going to worry away all the good moments in between. Oh, I know what I would buy. My hair ties. They definitely come in handy, and they're only one euro, so twice the cost would just be two euros. And I think that I could still afford that. I actually need to buy a new set, since I let Manon and Chris play with the last ones I had while I was babysitting them. And now most are either broken or missing. They had pom-pom slingshot wars with them. Enough said. Well, I'm meeting up with Ollie in a few minutes anyway, so I can probably get some on the way. See you soon, dear diary.